Hello and welcome to this Basic Maths Masterclass Part 1. My name is Jen Woodhams and I work for Catplan Live Online. I've worked for Catplan for the last six years and I predominantly teach management accounting papers but I absolutely love maths so I'm really looking forward to this session as I hope you are. First of all, can I just ask, can people hear me? I'm just going to look down. Can people hear me okay and see me okay? You just pop a message. Excellent. As long as one person can hear me, I always think, well, that's a good start, isn't it? So if you are having sound problems throughout the session, the best thing to do, to be honest, is to log out and just use your link to log back in again. Because if you've got it up and running once and it does drop out, it often is best just to quickly log out and log back in again. But hopefully, you shouldn't have any sound issues. Um, as I said, my name's Jen Woodhams, and with me is Claire, uh, Claire Skerritt, who can answer sort of technical WebEx queries. The best way of getting in contact with Claire is just using the chat panel, as some of you just did. There is the question and answer panel on WebEx as well, but just so it's all in one place, it's best if you just write it in the chat panel. That's the one that's got a bit of a speech bubble. Also, hopefully, you can see the video. If you can't see the video, click on the Participants tab. That's the one that's got uh, two little heads next to it. Now, I'd also like to welcome those of you who are watching the recording. As I know, there'll be quite a few that will watch the recording at some later point. If you are watching the recording, you will be able to see the chat and the video when they're actually on. Again, it's just a case of clicking on the little relevant icons at the top right hand of your screen. Also, with your recording, you can pause it and stop and come and start again at any point. But, great to see that so many people have logged on live. And for those of you, it is going to be an interactive session. So I will be asking you questions and hopefully quite a few of you will respond and again the best way of responding to me is just popping a message in the chat panel. So what are we going to be covering today? Well it is going to be very basic maths. I'll be running through principles and then illustrating these with examples and giving you a chance to put them into practice with little examples as well. I'll be running through slides on the screen, and they are the slides that were handed out to you, or emailed to you, should I say, by Claire yesterday. So if you've got a copy of those printed out in front of you, great. If you haven't, it doesn't matter. You should be able to see what's on the screen, so that will be enough. That'll be fine. In terms of where the examples come from, some of them are just general, but some of them do use formulae from accountancy that are relevant to accountancy qualifications. I do know that there will be some people who are not studying for an accountancy qualification, but it doesn't matter. It was just I needed to use some examples, and as the majority of people probably are, that seemed like the most sensible thing to do. We're also going to be looking at calculations and how we can do them quicker to save ourselves time because often professional exams are very time pressured. So anything we can do to actually save ourselves a bit of time is great. I am going to be using a scientific calculator, if you can see one um, on screen. If you have got um, a scientific calculator to hand, or you can quickly run and go and get one now, that means you'll get the most out of this session. But it doesn't matter if you haven't got one. If you've just got a normal calculator, that's fine. If you haven't got a calculator at all, you can get one just off the internet by Googling and searching scientific calculator. Um, but again, if you haven't got one, you'll still learn lots from this. So I'm going to stop my video now because you don't want to see the top of my head as I'm writing on the screen. And also we find it tends to run smoother if we don't leave the video on the whole time because you don't need quite so much bandwidth. So I am going to stop the video now. Could you just let me know where you all are in the in the world? Because I know that we've got 
um, quite a lot of people from all over the country. If you could just pop in the chat panel. The point of this really is to get you answering questions. So you're, you're in the, um, the, the mindset of answering me, but also uh, to make sure that you're comfortable with using that chat panel, because it's interesting as well. Oh, we've got all sorts of places. We've got uh, Greece, Norfolk, Romania, Bristol, Surrey, Ireland, Alloa, Australia, Warrington. So we really have got uh, close by and further afield as well. And it's great to see that we've got 50 people uh, who have logged on live as well. So that's excellent. I'm based in Leeds. Uh, and Claire is normally based in Manchester. Although, oh yes, Claire has said that she's based in Manchester. Um, for those of you that aren't sure, when it says Cap Kaplan Administrator, that's uh, Claire who's, who's helping out with questions today. Right, without further ado then, what I'm going to do is share my desktop. Now at this point, what you will find is that your screen has changed and now you can see my slides. But what also will have happened is that you will have lost your panels. So if you do want the chat panel back up again so that you can ask, Claire, ask me a question or respond to me, or if you're having sound problems, chat to Claire, then you just need to hover at the top of the screen. That will bring a panel up, and then you should see where it says chat. There's a little speech bubble. You click on that. And then you can just move that to anywhere in the screen you want to. Perhaps put it in the uh, top right hand corner or move it out of the way anyway so that you can then see the screen as, as much of the screen as you want to. Moving on to the first slide, what are we going to be covering in this basic math session? Over the two sessions, we'll be covering symbols, firstly. In an equation, you might need to understand what a symbol means. Uh, so we're just going to run through some common symbols that you might see. We're then going to talk about how you can use your calculator and how to use it quicker to save you time. There will be a little bit on rounding as well. There's not a heading for that here, but it's just such a really quick little bit that we'll be talking about. Then order of operations, thinking about in an equation, Doing things in the right order is really important. So when you think about what the correct order is. We're also going to talk about rearranging equations. So if you're trying to solve an equation to find an unknown, what we need to often rearrange it. And just talking about how we do that properly. We'll also be looking at ratios like the ratio 2 to 1 or 5 to 4 looking at how we split something out using ratios. We're going to be looking at percentages, what one is, quick ways of calculating them, and percentage changes, including perhaps a little bit on markups and margins, because that's quite a, a common thing that, bus that businesses will do and students need to do within calculations. And finally, we'll be looking at simultaneous equations. That's when we've got two equations with two values that are unknown that we're trying to find out. And it's all about trying to use those two equations to actually work out the value of the unknown variables, as we call them. So this is what we'll be covering over the first two sessions. We should get quite a few of those topics done today. Uh, the last few were a little bit more meaty. One thing to say, if you are having technical issues, perhaps as you can't see the screen for any reason, if you just send those to the Kaplan administrator and they will answer those for you. If you're not sure on anything that I've run through, so the mathematical side of things, then ask me the question or just show it to all. So just moving on to the next slide, we said we'd start off with symbols. So what's the first symbol that we're going to look at? It's this sigma. 
and all the sigma means is the sum of. In other words, just adding all values together. So the sum of whatever values we need to do, we need to add them together. We've also got this little sort of hat symbol, which means to the power of, and I've just shown an example there, e.g. 10 to the power of 2, also known as 10 squared, is 10 little hat 2. And all that means is 10 times 10, which is 100. If you had 10 cubed, i.e. 10 to the power of 3, that would be 10 times 10 times 10. We've got your square root as well, and that's opposite of to the power of. Opposite of to the power of. So, for example, if we did root 100, it would give us 10. It's trying to say what two figure, what, what value, when it's multiplied by itself, will give the value. That's square root. Both of those are buttons on a calculator, the little hat symbol and the square root symbol, and we'll talk about that in a moment with an example. We've then got greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So, for example, you might have zero. Then that less than or equal to symbol. Then x. Then less than or equal to. And then, sorry, that should say three. So what we're saying here is x is greater than or equal to zero. Now I can see, that if you'll see that sort of shown the other way around to that one, but if you look at it, the big side is towards the x. So that means it's greater than or equal to zero, and x is less than or equal to, because the small side of the arrow is, is next to the x, less than or equal to three. So in other words, x equals either one or two or three. If it was zero, zero less than x less than three, so x is greater than naught and and less than three, then that would mean that x would equal one or two because it would be between naught and three. X with a little bar on the top. Sorry, that's not showing up for some reason. Means the average of x. So we just add up all the numbers and divide by how many numbers there are. And then, ah, see, sorry, that bar should be up there. Um, and the little sort of uh, small sigma sign standard de means standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is just looking at how spread out data is, and there is a formula to calculate that. Now, depending on how flash your calculator is, it might be able to do that, but that's not something we're going to cover today. So there are some common symbols. In terms of where you might see these, you might see these in expected value formula for predictions, in linear regression formula for forecasting, in learning curve formula for calculating how long it takes to make a product when a learning effect applies, and in linear programming problems for finding the optimum product mix when facing constraints.